Many problems in engineering are modeled by a system of linear equations. The technique of solving a system of linear equations is part of the branch of mathematics called linear algebra. This branch of mathematics proves to be a very powerful tool for the modern day engineer, for example, when he has to deal with the structuring and processing of large amounts of quantitative data. Most courses on linear algebra begin with the method of solving a system of linear equations. This is a natural and logical way to begin the course. In this video, you will see three examples of a small system of linear equations. In class, you're going to learn that the three cases illustrated by these examples are in fact the three possible cases for any system of linear equations. Let's first have a look at a single linear equation. Two examples are the equation of a line in the xy plane and the equation of a plane in the xyz space. In order to be able to generalize these examples, we change the notation. Instead of using the letters xyz, we use the symbols x1, x2, x3. A linear equation in n variables x1, x2, up to xn is an equation of this form. The scalars a1, a2, etc. are the coefficients of the equation and b is the right-hand side of the equation. If we combine several linear equations, we obtain a system of linear equations. A system of n linear equations in n variables x1 up to xn looks like this. Consider, for example, the following system of two equations. x1 minus 2 times x2 is equal to minus 1. Minus x1 plus 3 times x2 is equal to 3. Geometrically, this system describes a set of two lines in the x1, x2 plane. If you draw these lines, you see that these two lines intersect at a single point with coordinates x1 equal to 3 and x2 equal to 2. The intersection point shown here is a solution of the linear system. In general, a solution of a linear system in n unknowns x1, x2 up to xn is an ordered list of n numbers x1, x2 up to xn such that the left-hand side of each equation equals the right-hand side of that equation. In the previous example, the system happens to have precisely one solution. This, of course, is not always the case when you consider two lines in the plane. For example, have a look at this system. x1 minus 2 times x2 equals minus 1, minus x1 plus 2 times x2 equals 3. Obviously, these two lines are parallel, so this system has no solution at all, because there exist no numbers x1 and x2 for which both equations are true. So far, we have seen an example of a system with a unique solution and an example of a system with no solution. Can you think of yet another situation? Here's a third possibility for a system of two equations in two unknowns. x1 minus 2 times x2 equals minus 1, minus x1 plus 2 times x2 equals 1. In this example, the two equations actually describe the same line. So all points on that line are a solution of the system, so the system has infinitely many solutions. From left to right, you have a system with no solutions, a system with precisely one solution, and a system with infinitely many solutions. Now, you might start to wonder how many solutions a system of n linear equations in n unknowns could have in general. You're going to learn in class that the three possibilities that you have encountered in the examples above are in fact the only possibilities in general. In other words, you're going to learn in class that each system of linear equations has either no solution, precisely one solution, or infinitely many solutions. A linear system with at least one solution is called consistent, and a linear system with no solutions is called inconsistent. Given a system of linear equations, how do you find out how many solutions it has, and if the system is consistent, how do you actually find all solutions? Well, a nice algorithm exists 
which enables you to answer these questions systematically for each system. This algorithm will be the topic of the first lecture of your linear algebra course. The rationale of this algorithm is to replace a system of linear equations in a finite number of steps by an equivalent system, which is easier to solve, where each step is an operation of one of the following types. Firstly, one equation is replaced by the sum of itself and a multiple of another equation. Secondly, two equations are interchanged. And thirdly, one equation is multiplied by a non-zero constant. Finally, have a look at this system of three equations in three unknowns. You will see in class that this system can be transformed to this equivalent system, which is easy to solve. Can you already find solution of this system and check that the solution of the second system is indeed a solution of the first system as well? In class you will learn how and why this algorithm works in general and with that knowledge you will be able to solve any linear system yourself. See you in class.